routine, exactly how I fix my squat and how I learn to squat and everything and all the nuances that come with squatting. If you guys like videos like this, don't forget to give the video a huge thumbs up. And if you guys get this video to like, let's say 100 likes, I will do my how I grew my hips and slash butt bulking 101, how I bulked, how exactly I did it, what exactly I did, all that good stuff and you know my pros and cons about bulking, everything that happened while I was bulking. And I'll do that video if we can get this video to 100 likes. Can we? I don't know. Is that me stretching? Is that stretching 100 likes? I don't think so. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you have not subscribed already or if you're not subscribed, don't forget to subscribe. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually show you guys my squat. When I first started powerlifting or doing a low bar squat, I actually used to do high bar and I didn't even know the difference between low bar and high bar and I'm going to show an image of me and my squat in the very very beginning stage of whatever it is that I'm doing <laughs> and it's not so pretty okay one thing that I thought was just squatting was just squatting I didn't realize that there was a huge technique around it and I didn't realize how kind of complicated it could be especially if you don't know what you're doing I should explain to you guys why this squat wasn't really the best technique for my body and for me and my goals. All right guys, so this is my squat from the very freaking beginning of my powerlifting journey. And the things that I'm pointing out here is that there's this lumbar flexion posterior pelvic tilt, which I'm kind of pointing at right here. And it's basically when my butt is kind of tucking into um, like, I don't know, when I'm squatting, it just like tucks in. And some people will naturally do this and that's fine. But for me, I, you know, I have, I should have more mobility and more range where it shouldn't be doing that. And it's not really ideal. So as you can see here, boom, it's kind of tucking in. And sometimes it's, it's even worse than others. And the biggest thing is that I was not bracing myself as you can see here your squat is supposed to go down like a straight line and mine is like literally all over the place i don't start where i finish and the bar is just not in a straight line so my form wasn't wasn't ideal in back in the day now i'm going to show you guys my improved squat so this is my squat now and it has come a very long way a lot of it has to do with the fact that i've done a lot more mobility i've improved my technique like tenfold and i i mean it shows because i'm actually able to squat more weight in a proper way which was the entire goal okay i'm gonna actually tell you guys what worked for me and why i went from the bad squat to the good squat and it's still not perfect but it's a lot better than it all right guys so this is like the side by side comparison from the low bar squat that i first started off with and the newer low bar squat that's been mostly recent and you can definitely tell the difference especially if you pay attention right here where i'm freezing it my depth isn't as low but i'm definitely bracing and i am tighter now this squat actually was uh when i was in la at barbell brigade and you can just tell by how I'm moving that everything just seems, it, it flows and it's going much more smoothly than before. All right, so now I'm gonna explain to you guys after you guys saw the before and the after, what exactly helped me to get from before to after. So number one are weightlifting shoes. Now, you don't necessarily need weightlifting shoes, but for me specifically, it did help me out a ton. My ankle range is not that great I'm, honestly like my whole lower body whether it's hamstrings are really tight and my calves are really tight from years of long distance running that right then and there just kind of jacked me up real quick and so that's why weightlifting shoes that have a heel actually really really did help and I, I will link the ones that I use down below they actually Nike came out with some new ones the Romaleo 3s which I haven't had a chance to try out but they look amazing and I mean anything that's an upgrade is usually better than the downgrade you know uh, I'll link those down below if I can find my old ones and also the new ones if you guys want to check those out the biggest thing that helped me out a ton was mobilizing now I unfortunately when I did half marathon training I was great at stretching afterwards and yeah I uh, 
basically screwed myself over. Uh, so don't do that. I'm gonna actually show you guys some clips of exactly what I do pre-squat, like so before I squat to actually warm up and to mobilize to make sure that everything is like functioning and warm and the muscles aren't cold and tight. And then after my routine, what exactly I do to cool down and to make sure that I'm actually mobilizing afterwards. That's something that I have to do. Not everyone has to do that. And not everyone, you know, will do the same things I do. Some people will do a lot of things differently and that's perfectly fine. Do what works best for you. Okay guys, um, but these are the things that worked for me. Right, so I'm gonna roll those clips and I'm gonna give you guys a little voiceover of the things that I do and what's helped me and all the equipment that I've used that's helped me mobilize and really loosen up the hips, loosen up the hamstrings and also the calves and everything in between to make sure that my squat is 100. Or another thing that I actually used and just recently got was a belt because it mainly helps with bracing. And the reason why a lot of the differences in my old squat and my new squat are, I mean, the key point is my core. And how before I actually wasn't really using my core, I was just dropping and like kind of just thinking that it was all in my legs and nothing else. And I actually started using my core, embracing my stomach, embracing my abs or gut or whatever. And that actually ha has helped me a ton. I was able to really push into the belt, which has helped me out tremendously. And it literally put 30 plus pounds on, on my squat just by feeling secure and having my core secure, which essentially protects your back and protects that your, you know, your whatever this upper upper body area from snapping up okay? okay and so with that obviously the key differences are bracing and also keeping my tightness it wasn't just keeping my tightness in my core but also in like my shoulder areas where i am holding the bar and then like the trap area where i'm sitting it at so keeping everything tight is essential to actually having a pretty solid squat. Now, I'm not an expert, guys. Take whatever I say with a grain of salt. I will actually link some really good videos from other people on here on YouTube that have actually watched and learned from and who actually coached me. I'm still a noob, I'm still learning, and I'm still trying to improve over time. So hopefully these tips helped you guys. If you guys like the video, don't forget to give the video a huge thumbs up. It does help me out tons and please don't forget to subscribe and join the little family here on this channel and i'll see you guys in the next one